evening. Good evening. <laughs> if you would please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Welcome to the regular meeting of Bedford City Council, May 16th, 2022. Clerk, call the roll, please. Spinks? Here. Nudis? Here. Luparty? Here. Asbury? Here. Saunders? Here. Kochi? Here. Uh, Council, you have the minutes of the work session of May 2nd, 2022. Any corrections? Seeing none, can I have a motion for acceptance by Spinks, second by Luparty? Call the roll. Spinks? Yes. Nudis? Yes. Blueharty? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. And Council, you have the minutes of the special work session of May 9th, 2022. Any corrections to that? Seeing none, can I have a motion for acceptance by Asbury, second by Saunders? Clerk, call the roll, please. Spinks? Yes. Nudis? Yes. Blueharty? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. And then we get to the part of the meeting, I think, that's why some of you are here. We <laughs> <laughs> can't have a little bit of humor in there. <laughs> I would like to call, oh no, I can't, yeah, not, not yet. <laughs> Council, I need a resolution. Number 2584-22. All right, I get to read these. Uh, being a resolution appointing Frank E. Smith, Jr. to fill the vacancy of council in Ward 4 and declaring an emergency. Can I have a motion for such by Saunders, second by Asbury? Clerk, call the roll. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. And for the record, that passed as an emergency. Oh. Oh, it has to be. Yes. With that, I'm going to like to call Mr. Frank Smith forward. Charter and laws of the city of Bedford, Ohio. The charter and the charter and laws of 
the seat of Bedford, Ohio. And faithfully, and faithfully, honestly, honestly, and impartially, and impartially, discharge the duties, discharge the duties of the position of, of the position of Councilman Ward Four, Councilman Ward Four of the City of Bedford, Ohio, of the City of Bedford, Ohio. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs>
that, that's the best part of this job. And uh, this next presentation holds a special place in my heart because I was a former firefighter here in Bedford. So it, it means a lot. And uh, I would like to call Mr. Sterling Black forward.
we are very honored tonight to have two distinguished members of uh, our Ohio state government. Uh, and I can say two of the hardest working members of the state government uh, that we've been friends with for a long time, worked together. And uh, Nita Brent, if you would come forward, our state representative.
Now you are my family too. <laughs>
Yeah, no, my father's a
section number 321.34 uh, of the Ohio Rights Code in declaring an emergency. I have a uh, motion to put this on second reading. Saunders, second by Asbury. Clerk, call the roll, please. Stinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Smith? Epstein. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Resolution number 2582-22. Approving and accepting the proposed 2022 tax budget for the year January 1st, 2023 through December 31st, 2023 and declaring an emergency. It's our wish to put that also on second reading. I have a uh, motion for such by Flu Hardy, second by Janudis. Clerk, call the roll please. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Flu Hardy? Yes. Smith? Epstein. 
Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Resolution number 2583-22. A resolution declaring the necessity uh, to improve certain streets in the city of Bedford by lighting the same and declaring a virgin. I know it sounds silly, but we have to do this. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, this annual thing we do to keep the uh, street lights on, it's kind of important. And the next uh, three, uh, this resolution, the next two ordinances all pertain to street lighting, and uh, we want to put those on second reading. <coughs> Can I have a motion for second by Saunders, seconded by Lugard, uh, Asbury. <coughs> Good luck, boy. Clerk, <laughs> call the roll, please. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Smith? Stan. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Ordinance number 9970-22. An ordinance determined to proceed with the improvement of certain streets in the city of Bedford by lighting the same and declaring an emergency. Yeah. Motion for um, second reading. <coughs> Sphinx, second by Janudis. Call the roll, please. Sphinx? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Smith? Stan. Gasbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Ordinance number 9971-22. Is an ordinance levying the uh, special assessment for the improvement of the street and lighting of the same uh, in accordance with resolution, the two, the prior resolution number 2583-2022 and prior ordinance 9970-2022 and declaring an emergency. And again, our wish to put on second reading. A uh, motion by Asbury, second by Saunders. Call the roll, please. Spinks? Yes. Nudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Smith? Stan. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. And, can I miss something? Reports. Mr. Malice. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just want to start first on um, congratulating Councilman Smith, as well as uh, our new fire medic, Mr. Black. They both are going to do an exceptional job. Look forward to working with, uh, with both of you. Just a couple of updates I have. I want to go through the list real quickly. Uh, one, I'd like to take a minute and commend our canine unit. Um, a couple weeks ago, um, City of Garfield Heights sent out a request. Um, they were trying to locate a suspect involved in a shooting, and our officers responded. Our canine uh, unit was able to locate uh, the suspect who was hiding, um, and we were able to assist the city of Garfield Heights in, in apprehending the suspect um, with no one getting hurt. So I, I wanted to commend um, that uh, those officers as well as uh, the canine unit. Again, uh, another resource for, for our department. Um, having two is vital, and that's a, another example of that. In regards to uh, Security, we did reach out and had a meeting with our contractor that assisted in the camera installation. Uh, for those of you that don't know, we have the uh, cameras installed along the auto mile on Broadway and Rockside. Um, monitors traffic. Um, there's a couple that are uh, able to read license plates when there is a uh, incident. We can check that. Uh, through a generous donation from the Auto Mile, we're going to be looking to install those throughout the historic district and in areas of Broadway. We met with the contractor um, and tried to identify different locations, areas on the square, um, historical society, uh, to make sure that area is covered um, to where if there is a call, we can pull those uh, cameras up into the cruisers um, to assist in our response. So we hope to have those um, installed and operational by the summertime. 
In regards to Broadway, I uh, just wanted to uh, provide an update regarding the construction project. Uh, we are getting ready to begin this week. Uh, daytime work has been pushed back a couple days, only due to a delay in materials coming in. Uh, they will start the sewer work and daytime work uh, Wednesday on the 18th, uh, and then the evening work will commence um, Sunday evening, the 22nd, and then that will be the waterline work. And again, um, Broadway will be closed during those evening hours uh, from 10 p.m. until 6 a.m. Uh, there is detour. Uh, that information can be found online, the detour route. Um, and as well as um, I do want to make a point because we, we are including additional signage. Um, all of the uh, restaurants and establishments that are open until 11, you will still be able to access those. Um, pizza shops, Tavern Off Broadway, Cernas, the Pompeys. Um, they are, you will be able to, to access that. So um, just a friendly reminder of that. Uh, our tree planting as a follow-up to receiving the grant, we did commence the, um, the contract to commence the, the planting. Cuyahoga kind of County was out, they were taking photos, um, which is good, which is a grant requirement. Um, and again, we're gonna hope to plant between 50 and 60 of those this spring, and then the remaining will be planted in the fall. Um, our portion, again, that was $50,000 grant, and our match was uh, just over $5,000. Friendly reminder that June is free permit month for um, specific projects for uh, owner-occupied uh, residential homes. So if you're looking to do some improvements, contact the building department. Those, those fees for the permits are waived next month. In regards to the building department, we have sent out, uh, we started sending out notices a few months ago to vacant and or bank owned properties um, regarding grass that it's their responsibility to maintain those. Some of the reason to send those notices out ahead of time is in the event that we have to go out and cut, they have to have been given notice in order to be assessed. Obviously, we do not want to be in the grass cutting business. Um, that is not our goal, um, but obviously we need those properties to be maintained. I will, uh, I will mention that our staff um, was out middle of, middle of last week and started putting some notices out um, on the properties. Um, when those notices get posted, um, we're required to give them a 72-hour notice before city staff can then go ahead and cut. Um, a lot of that time period ran uh, over the weekend and we did start cutting some of the properties today in between the raindrops. Um, so if you see something with very high grass, uh, most likely we're aware and hopefully it'll be cut, be cut very soon. Um, summer employment. Anybody interested or knows somebody looking for seasonal work, part-time work, please contact us. Um, we're having a very difficult time um, getting applications in general. Uh, we've only been able to hire a couple of uh, seasonal workers. We have last year, we raised uh, the top of the pay up to $12 an hour. Um, we've raised it again this year up to $14 an hour. Um, we've been in contact with the Bedford City Schools. Anyone here that knows of anyone looking for some work or some uh, teenagers on the street, um, we're hiring. So uh, please help get the word out. Um, good jobs. Uh, and they could lead to a, a future employment. I'm one example, actually. <laughs> so um, just pass that word. Appreciate it. Uh, and lastly, I have, I just wanted to provide a quick update. We are really working to finalize the details with our uh, municipal pool. Uh, in, in particular, the opening dates, the closing dates, classes, typically we have that in place already. The reason that we don't, um, for those of you that don't know, we were recently awarded uh, $200,000 in grant funds to do a major renovation to the pool house. The pool house has not been touched since it was built in the mid-60s, and it really needs a facelift. Um, part of the requirements with the grant is we are re we have to spend a large portion of that by the end of September. So what that means is we're really trying to get creative on, on you know, 
when we're working to put to bid that project out, once it's awarded, how quickly can we spend those dollars? Does it mean the pool has to close on a little early? Does it mean maybe we just open a little later? We're working through those details. We will have something posted as soon as possible. Um, our director, Mike Callahan, our city engineer, um, myself have been having those ongoing discussions. So look for that to be finalized. Um, we apologize for that inconvenience, but we also want to make sure we don't um, mess anything up as far as the grant requirements. Um, there may be some adjustments this year, but I can guarantee next year will be uh, it'll be a, a good finished project that's long overdue. End of report. Thank you. Our director, Mr. Montello. I have no report. Just want to thank everybody for coming. Congratulate Councilman Smith and Fire Medic Black. Congratulations, guys. Look forward to working on you. Thank you. Finance Director Gambosi. Congratulations also, Councilman Smith. Wonderful to have you on board. Uh, also, Mr. Sterling Black, a wonderful candidate. We're going to be very uh, happy with him. And uh, I wish them luck. And I uh, look forward to working with both of them. Uh, I had a chance to work Shred Day, uh, and it was a great success overall. It was uh, thanks to Ani, Steve, Sean, Brittany volunteering their time to help uh, with the public and the shredding. Uh, so I had a couple of just recommendations for the public for the future when you're coming up to having the, the items shredded. Um, a couple items that worked really well for us to process faster and get people in and out. Clothes baskets, if you put your papers in that, we could dump quicker. Also boxes were good. People put that in the box and we could dump them better. Uh, try to stay away from plastic bags. Plastic bags, we have to rip them open. We have to uh, go inside and some people have plastic bags in the plastic bags in the plastic bags and we can't process any plastic okay so no plastics try to uh, get those in boxes uh, like I said the clothes baskets are wonderful those just dump really fast uh, other things like metal clips make sure you take those off any heavy duty type metal steel items uh, make sure that the three ring binders uh, sometimes you'll see CDs CDs are okay but not the plastic cases so anything plastic Try not to get that mixed in with the paper. So, but it was very successful. We did a lot of work, uh, a lot of uh, cars, a lot of uh, residents, and uh, it went very well. Just congratulations to all of them. Did a great job, Mike. <coughs> Staff did a good job on that. And that's all I have for tonight. That's the end of my report. Thank you, Council. Mrs. Spinks. Good evening. I'm trying to make it through this without crying. <laughs> Frank, welcome aboard. He has some really, really big shoes to fill. You already know that. Um, I felt like I, I knew you before I met you through uh, Paula um, and Marilyn Tresic, your neighbor out there. I probably said her, I call her Marilyn T because that doesn't mean Marilyn. But I uh, um, heard so many good things about you. Um, I, I'll be talking to you. I've already talked to you about Mills on Wheels. I right, told your wife. <laughs> There's some other things. Betsy's in the back. She's also. We've got a lot of stuff with the historical society. We're gonna, we're gonna keep you busy. We're gonna keep you busy. But uh, um, Angela, <laughs> I know Mom's looking down and smiling. Um, she cared about her city so much and her residents. And I know Frank from what um, conversations I had with Paula. Um, I miss her dearly, but I know. Frank and me are going to become real good friends because uh, he's got the same view of uh, how to be a good council person like I do. And um, Paula was my mentor. Her and Marilyn Zalata um, interviewed me down the last lady on council. So I've got Jennifer and i got Tracy up here. So, uh, um, but uh, it's just, uh, just a wonderful night. Um, I Archfield um, also. Congratulations to Sterling, our, our uh, firefighter. What an outstanding young man. Now we're going to get on to city stuff. Um, Mike, on the sinkhole that's on sector, I know they filled it in. Is there still, it's, uh, had a couple of residents act, uh, ask about, you know, I tell them it takes a while. Yeah, they'll be out to fill that. I'll try to get, send you an update sometime tomorrow on when that may be. I know it's scheduled to get filled. Okay. I was very glad to see the speed sign up on the curve uh, by Honda on Broadway. 
um, as it was flashing as I was driving by, a guy passed me doing about 70 miles an hour. <laughs> so it's, it's just crazy with the speed right now. Again, on um, Willard, on Grand Boulevard, on uh, Greencroft, Flora, Jackson. People that don't even think, don't even attempt to stop at these stop signs. I can't believe there hasn't been a horrendous wreck yet. I know it's not just in my ward. I know it's everywhere. It's everywhere you go. But uh, it's especially getting real bad to come out of the driveway. And I've had several neighbors say the same thing. You pull out of your driveway. Of course, there's a stop sign right by my house. I pull out and almost get hit. Our car flies by me because I actually stopped when I pull out of my driveway. I stopped for the stop sign. Well, they don't have time to stop, so they just, you know, it's uh, it's got really, really bad um, happy people on Natalie with the trees being planted. I had several phone calls, and um, they were giving me credit for it, and I told them I could take credit for it. <laughs> I had nothing to, to do with it, that uh, our city did, the city manager did that with everybody else, to help everybody else. Um, Jeff, I'm going to kind of steal a little bit of your thunder. Awesome, awesome chocolate walk to downtown Alliance. It was fun. It had a little bit of rain, but uh, everybody now sugar level is really high. I brought in some leftover to council. <laughs> Bob had to take out a few things for himself. <laughs> but uh, oh, while my husband's out here, after last year being such a horrendous year with my husband's health, we're getting ready to celebrate our 13th anniversary of marriage. Um, coming up, and uh, I'm, you're awesome. <laughs> and I love you, Thank you. In a report. Thank you. Mr. Janunas. Thank you. Well, I'd like to welcome Frank Smith to the group here. Uh, really looking forward to working with you. Uh, and I, I would like to also congratulate Sterling Black. Um, also, I'd like to say, I'd like to thank the people in Ward 2 for uh, all the work they're doing now that spring, cleaning up their yards and fixing things up, and it uh, really looks great, and I really appreciate uh, all that people are doing. I, I'm just, I'm noticing less trash around than I've ever noticed before, so people are out there doing doing their thing and picking up trash, and they, it really looks good. So I'd really like to thank the people in, in Ward 2. I was at Taft Park uh, today, I was strolling around, and I didn't find one, not even one piece of litter in Taft Park. I don't think, since I was 17 years old, I don't think I've ever gone to Taft Park without seeing litter. So that was, that, I was really happy about that. <coughs> yeah. um, and, and I'd like to also thank uh, the city for making sure that trash cans filled, or, or uh, emptied all the time, so that really helps a lot when there's a trash can for the kids to use. Uh, and also, thirdly, um, I'd just like to congratulate the Bedford Downtown Alliance. The uh, chocolate walk was absolutely wonderful. It was just the neatest thing, and I tell you, the, uh, the Bedford, uh, the, the chocolate walk was the first event that my two boys actually wanted to go to. <laughs> in bed forever, if that means anything. And they had a blast, and, and I did too, and I just want to thank the uh, Bedford Downtown Alliance for uh, uh, staging that. It was really, really, really a lot of fun. And the report, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Fluherty. I want to thank, uh, congratulate, I should say, Mr. Smith there, and uh, Sterling uh, for their uh, new positions. Uh, Mike, you were talking about this now recently in the camera. I didn't, I'm sorry I didn't hear all your conversation. Of course, I only listen to half the things you say. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you were talking about the cameras uh, and getting put up downtown. We're <laughs> uh, yeah, so, <laughs> I was good. I was good. Uh, the, um, la last year, uh, Bedford Auto Mile had reached out and they asked if we had any specific projects that we were looking at that we may not have been budgeted for. 
Um, they did make a donation to the um, Bedford City Schools. I believe it was a foundation uh, donation where they, they provided the, the schools with $20,000. We had sent over um, a couple of different projects. We sent over one where when we first did the cameras along Rockside Road and Broadway, we kind of we referred to it almost as a pilot program where they funded it and we installed the cameras, um, not private security, but roadway so we could see traffic, you know, speeding, if there's an accident, a hit and run. Um, we utilize those businesses, obviously electricity, but we also utilize their Wi-Fi. And it's, it's tied right into our cruisers, to where if we get a call where there was a hit and run, and it's a red Toyota heading, oh, what is that, south, whatever it may be, we can pull it up, check, we could use a license plate camera to identify it, and then obviously work mutual aid. Um, it's really, really been successful. Um, it solved a couple of uh, specifically hit and runs um, and been a good resource for, um, for PD. One of the things that we looked at was downtown. We had a couple of, uh, so moving forward, one of the projects that we talked about, the Auto Mile was extending that into like the historic district and on the commons. I know in years past, there's been some damage to some of the small businesses. One of them had a window busted out. Um, I know the historical society uh, years back had some damage. Um, I think it was specifically with like some stained glass that was very expensive to, um, to replace. So some of it is just to adding that a little bit of uh, security along that corridor. Um, the auto mile provided us with $50,000. Now obviously not all of that is for that. Um, they allowed us to provide the donation to cover those costs. And then any remaining dollars uh, they had requested be earmarked to any project to expand the commons or improvements to the commons. Um, we've been talking about um, that expansion project where we submitted a grant. We have some of our own dollars um, kind of a set aside for it, per se. Um, the auto mile part of that donation will go towards that as well, if we move forward with that. I was just getting to the point where that holes were knocked over a couple of weeks ago. Did we ever find out who did that down by the old uh, smoke shop? Oh, yes, we did identify who that was. Yes. The cameras would be a good cameras help. Would help. Yes, yeah. so that, we did identify that individual. Um, we actually had to utilize um, one of the business's security cameras um, to where we could find out who it was because they did leave the scene. Yeah. Um, officers were able to find who they were. But yes, that's a perfect example of that. Well, last Wednesday after that breakfast, somebody whacked the pole underneath the bridge on you know, Broadway. I don't know who hit that pole, but I don't know what it is when I took drivers there. They toss to stay away from poles. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who's teaching these people nowadays. They just run them over. But, uh, yeah, so, but the cameras definitely, we need to pick up some of these people that are doing all this. I mean, a little more security around town. That's all. I just asked you for a yes or no, but you, you explained it. <laughs> In the report. Mr. Smith. Um, I really don't, well, just coming in, I, I don't have a, uh, a report uh, for the war, but um, I, I would like to once again say thank you for everyone who uh, has faith in me to do this job. Um, the shoes are going to be off the bed to fill. But I'm going to try my best to do uh, what Paula um, started. Some of the things that she started, I would like to finish. Um, just ask for everyone's help, um, patience, because just getting into this, I don't know all of what's going on in the, in the war. Um, I'm going to be out there uh, trying to find out. I'm truly a face to face person. I like to get out and see it for myself. So you're going to see me out walking. Um, I walk in the mornings. So uh, I guess I will be out there. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Mr. Asbury. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, again, congratulations, Councilman Smith. Uh, I, I know you're going to do a fine job. I'm looking forward to working with you. 
And uh, congratulations to fire medic Sterling Black. He seems like a great young man, and he couldn't have landed with a better crew of, of, of guys and gals. So, um, Sandy mentioned that the, the, the chocolate walk was a big success, and uh, I, I kind of helped out last year's, but it was kind of COVID hampered, so we had a drive through kind of thing. Um, we went full bore this year. Uh, the BDA board and the planning committee would like to thank all those that were involved in putting on a, a, a very successful chocolate walk, um, including, but not limited to, all the volunteers, uh, the prize donors, the businesses, the city, the administration. Um, everything came together and was a great day. We had about 15, 20 minutes of sketchy rain, pretty hard rain, but after, uh, after the rain let, uh, let loose, uh, it cleared up and, and everybody seemed to have a great day. So thank you to everybody for that. Um, I'd like to let you know that uh, Bedford Downtown Alliance first first Friday of the year will be coming up Friday, June 3rd, 6 to 8 p.m. Keep your eye on the BDA website and the Facebook page for upcoming updates. And I'd also like to congratulate and thank the Bedford Garden Club for another uh, uh, really nice uh, uh, plant sale last Friday and Saturday. My wife and I got to do some shopping on Friday. We got some things planted Sunday. We spent about half the day back there. All right, I lied. My wife planted things <laughs> that I kind of maybe helped supervise a little bit. Um, but it was a good day, and, and thank you to the Garden Club again. Uh, a really nice sale. And uh, that's about it. Oh, Memorial Day break. Mike. Monday? The 30th? No, Memorial Day. Yes. Memorial Day at 1015 right here at City Hall. We'll Walk down to the square for a little uh, presentation. presentation there, and then down to the cemetery after that. So hopefully we can see you all out there. Um, that's it, and a report. Thank you. Mr. Saunders. I'd like to give my congratulations to Councilman Smith and our new EMS, Mr. Black. Almost sounds like a law firm. Smith and Black. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm sure they will do very well. Uh, we need some new people here and there once in a while, too. And the fire department is aging itself, so uh, hopefully we, he won't get all the work. But uh, he will, I'm sure, work out very well. Uh, <clears throat> Quick question to Mike. Is Ennis Hill on the resurfacing plans? Because it's deteriorating very heavily. There's a section that is sunk of the section. And of course, if you go up over the hill, there's a small section that the water main, the two water main blocks have destroyed too. Sure. So the rest of the street's in good shape. It's just those two little areas. What we're doing now is we are working to identify uh, which streets are going to be included in that road program. We will have that to council um, in preparation of going out to bid um, next month. Um, what we're trying to do is get as many streets as we can for the amount of money that we, we have set aside. I will tell you, I don't believe it is on the full resurfacing only because, you know, obviously proper planning, we need to do that water line first. So most likely, we're going to be looking at doing the water line, possibly this year, and then the resurfacing will be next year. I can't commit to that 100% yet, but that is one of the conversations that we had. So we're not going to resurface it this year, not because it's not needed. We need to do that water line first and then come back and do the resurfacing. Now, when we do the water line, obviously, we resurface that, that trench that, that we have to. Um, but that'll probably be the order that it takes place if it's this year, next year, or if it's next year, the year at. But we're aware that some of those areas need to be addressed. Yes. And you're right, the water line from Center Road to Garden is the worst stretch of the road there. So that would be appreciated. The problem is going to be is we're going to have to do some repair on the hill because that, that pavement is really coming apart big time. Yes. And unfortunately, it was mostly caused by the gas company running their tractors back and forth and back and forth. They ripped up that surface course. So, and dragged the plate across part of it too. There's even the gouge from that. 
But anyhow, that's good to hear that it's at least being looked at. Uh, one other quick comment. There's two trees on the west side of the dead end stretch of Logan that I don't know if somebody hit the branches, but there's two branches just hanging there. Uh, they are the first couple houses actually on the west side of the street. You can't miss the branches. If somebody would get in there and at least clip them the proper way and then get rid of them, it would be appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a couple points. Uh, number one, the, the free permits, it's free permit fees. You still have to get the permits. Thank you. But the fees are way for uh, the month of June. And also uh, the chocolate walk was, was really good. Uh, had a great time. And, and the, the interesting thing about it, and uh, some of the committee members have told me, most of the people that showed up were from out of Bedford, which is the goal, is to get people to come and visit our businesses in the downtown area, and, and it worked. And uh, I always like to see when, when there's people there that I don't know, that's a good thing. Uh, that, that happened with Los Gallos, when that opened up the Mexican restaurant, I went in there, my wife and I, and we knew everybody in the place. Now we go in, I don't know anybody. Which means people are coming here, which is a great thing. And, and again, thanks to the uh, BDA for doing that. And maybe we should do some business, huh? A resolution authorized, oh, resolution number 2585-22. Authorizing the city manager to become a power, uh, uh, city of Bedford, I'm sorry, authorizing the city of Bedford to become a power, power clean future home community and to adopt a goal to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the city and declaring an emergency. It's our wish to put that on first reading. Uh, power a Clean Future Ohio is uh, a group that will come in and help the city. Uh, let me, let me read what it is. It's, they come in and empower local leaders with tools and resources to create carbon reduction plans and implement them in ways that are achievable, measurable, equitable, and economical. And the goals of, of, that they have are to reduce the carbon footprint of local communities across Ohio, attract clean energy development to the state to create careers for Ohioans, implement equitable policy solutions supported by local communities, and reduce energy costs for cities, businesses, and residents. Uh, I went to their presentation, and I thought it was a good thing for us to look at, and uh, we're going to have some people come in and talk to council and give us some more insight on that, but it's a good thing, and right now I need a resolution, uh, a motion for first reading. By Janudis, second by Spinks. Call the roll, please. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Flewhardy? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Cochi? Yes. <clears throat> Ordinance number 9973-22. Uh, author authorizing the approval of engineering fees to GDP Group for its services regarding design costs associated with the repair and resurfacing of Broadway State Route 14 in the city of Bedford and declaring an emergency. A motion for suspension by Asbury, second by Saunders. Um, these, Frank, you can vote on. I'm <laughs> 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 just letting you know. Just, <laughs> of course, call the roll. No, he's absorbing me now. I'm watching him. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Bluehardy? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Cochi? Yes. Motion for third and final by Spinks, second by Janudis. Um, yeah, I, I can think of this, These are uh, authorizing us um, to cover the costs associated with engineer work that we need to do um, for the ODOT Broadway resurfacing project, which will be next year. This is not affiliated with our project that we're doing now. Um, those of you that don't know, ODOT is going to be resurfacing Broadway Corp Limit to Corp Limit in fiscal year 2023. 
theoretically they could start this fall, um, but it really won't start until next spring. Um, we were tasked with re reviewing and submitting comments, questions, re requests um, to ODOT during the planning process, and our engineer uh, needs to do that work. So this authorizes us to cover those costs. Thank you. Questions? Seeing none. Call the roll, please. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Party? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Stain. Kochi? Yes. Ordinance number 9974-22. Amending ordinance number 9849-21, authorizing the city manager, manager and the finance director to modify the wage and benefits for safety forces uh, lateral transfers and declaring an emergency. However, we, we, we will we'll need to amend that uh, to uh, include uh, 2496 hours for the fire EMS. Okay, I have a motion to include the fire hours in this ordinance. By Asbury, second by. <laughs> 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 Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Uh, motion for suspension. By Spinks, second by Blue Hardy. Call the roll, please. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. And motion for third and final by Asbury, second by Saunders. I'll take this. Uh, Mayor, in regards to the uh, police and fire EMS, we did the lateral transfers earlier and had the ordinances passed for the police department. What we did now is make the equivalent of that for the fire department and the lateral transfers. And what we're doing here is that uh, one of the incentives that we do provide for coming to Bedford is depending upon where you're at and how many years of experience you have, it comes over to the scale of the fire department and the union as to what you'll be making with the city of Bedford and equivalent to that, so you're not losing out in the long run. And there's a couple other benefits in here. So I ask council to approve that, obviously, this evening uh, as we need that uh, done on emergency measure. Thank you. Questions? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Spinks? Yes. Denudis? Yes. Bluehardy? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Thank you. Ordinance number 9975-22. Amending ordinance number 9914-21, making additional... Oh, I'm sorry. Is that what it is? I got this. We corrected that earlier. It should, oh, um, an ordinance amending ordinance number 9914-22, making additional appropriations for current expenditures of the city and declaring an emergency. We have a motion for suspension. Saunders, second by Asbury. Call the roll, please. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Motion for third and final by Blue Hardy, second by Janudis. I'll take this one. Yep. Uh, as you know, we always adapt our budget and change budgets throughout the year when we have changes in uh, revenue sources or, in this case, expenditures also. Uh, at first, I'd like to address the police department where we have the jailer uh, using Solich Jail. We're going to have uh, a reduction in the cost of our payroll, so that's being reflected here It's a reduction of $80,000. Uh, we also have, uh, with the finance department, we had liability insurance increase this year of about $17,700, more than what we had budgeted earlier, so we have to increase that. We also did some computer security system work in our, in our city of multi-factor upgrades that will cost $9,600. Uh, in line with the bigger programs we were able to obtain, which uh, Jennifer and Mike did a great job on the CDBG $150,000 and the CDSG grant of $50,000, which we'll utilize towards the uh, pool house that we're going to be working with our um, ARPA funding also. And also we have our SEAL uh, burn fund, we have our grant uh, for the 2022 year we're budgeting today. We also have uh, the Cork Hill Storm Repair that you'll see later on the agenda this evening that we have emergency repairs there. We have some various recreational uh, 
lease grants, uh, service grants for our tree grant, $55,000. We were able to get a disability grant for $12,000 and recreation and social services grants for $27,000. Um, we also have, uh, let's go down the list here, uh, we also hired a mechanic in the water, we're charging at the water department where we have a person who's studying now and being trained on the, uh, the all our aspects of uh, various equipment. Some of them are quite complex, so there's a tiny frame of getting used to uh, learning all the aspects of our, uh, our autos and all our vehicles and how to repair them. Uh, some of the other items that we have is the current Broadway water lane project, uh, reappropriating monies for the uh, water department and the uh, wastewater funds too. Uh, so at this point I'd like Council to uh, look favorably on this and pass it this evening so we can uh, get uh, go forward on all these projects. Questions? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Party? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Ordinance number 9976-22. Amending ordinance number 9956-2022, authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with Axon Enterprises, Inc. for the purchase of tasers for the police department and declaring an emergency. I have a motion for suspension. Smith, second by Asbury. Call the roll, please. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Bluebarty? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Motion for third and final. By Spinks, second by Bluebarty. Uh, this ordinance, Mayor, we're uh, expanding a little more details as to how we're going to be paying the uh, Taser costs over time. Uh, our total cost will be $64,947.51, consisting of one payment, which is $12,989.51, followed by four other payments yearly at $12,989.50. And that's all just to clarify uh, how the payments will be made over time. And that's all this ordinance is doing this evening. I ask for council to uh, make a, approve this uh, ordinance this evening on emergency basis. Thank you. Questions? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Spinks? Yes. Knudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> ordinance number 9977-22. Amending ordinance number 9275-15, authorizing and directing the city manager to enter into a contract with Kimbo being the lowest responsive and responsible bidder and declaring an emergency. However, I'd like to ask for a motion to amend the lowest responsive and responsible language to the lowest and best. Can I get a motion to that effect first? Motion. Saunders, second by Asbury. Call the roll, please. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Um, motion for suspension by uh, Spinks, second by Janudis. Call the roll, please. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. <clears throat> Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Motion for third and final. Saunders, second by Asbury. Um, Mike or Frank, who likes us? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the city's contract, I should say, the, the, our consortium's contract with uh, Refuse Hauler uh, expires later this year. Uh, we work with a consortium, a number of different communities, uh, Bedford, Bedford Heights, Walton Hills, Oakwood, um, and we get together. Our service directors work to put out uh, bid documents and we advertise for uh, formal uh, bids. Typically, the contract's been a five-year contract. We did have two option years, which we exercised. Um, financially, it really made sense. Um, those, those figures were set already, and obviously, with many things, prices are going up. Um, we did, uh, the consortium bid the refuse and recycle contract out. Um, we've received a number of bids, Kimball, Rumpke, Waste Management, Republic, and looking at it, ultimately, it comes down to the consortium unanimously agrees to stick with 
um, Kimball, which is our recommendation to stay with Kimball. Um, there was, it was very close. Uh, there were some items that were listed in the um, Rumkey contract that really weren't the same service that Kimball was providing, uh, specifically when it gets involved with um, large and bulk items. Um, right now, they're collected. Um, residents would be required to contact 24-hour notice or they would not be collected. Um, there were a list of items that were included uh, as unacceptable items. Um, these were not listed on the uh, Kimball collection. Um, anything with Freon in it would have to be tagged and removed. There's obviously, there's a cost to that. We did some research. Um, it would cost residents over a hundred and some dollars to get that removed in order to put those items out on the tree lawn. So these are some of the comparisons that really weren't identified um, until we really got into the bid and, and looked at it. Um, so on top of that, there's a number of items that are listed in the consortium's bid document um, as far as performance requirements. Um, Rumkey, for instance, had uh, expressed and had exception to uh, a number of those items at which Kimball did not. One example being um, the limited liability or public liability insurance. Um, each of the consortium municipality requires to be added as an additionally insured if there were issues that come up. Um, that city is covered. Um, one example is Rumkey um, had exception to that. Looking at all of this, um, it's our recommendation and we agree with the consortium to stay with Kimball um, for an additional, uh, for a five-year contract. Thank you. Questions? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Spinks? Yes. Janunas? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Harness number 9978-22. Uh, an ordinance to levy assessments for the expense of the garbage refuse collection, recycling, and disposal within the City of Bedford during tax years 2022, 2023, 2024, uh, and 2025, respectively, and uh, declaring an emergency. And it's our wish to put this on first reading. We have a motion for such. By Fluharty, second by Janudis. Call the rule. Roll, please. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. <clears throat> Ordinance number 9979-22. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to accept the proposal of A and A safety for long line striping of streets in the city and declaring an emergency. A motion for suspension. Spinks, second by Fluharty. Call the roll, please. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Motion for third and final by. Saunders, second by Asbury. Um, Mike or Frank? I can think of All of our long line striping we contract out. Um, we are still able to do some of the uh, small um, crossbars uh, and other striping in house, but this is something that we've been um, contracting out for some years now. Um, normally it's been uh, under right around 30000 or less. Um, and as uh, one of the items Frank listed uh, was the additional appropriations because like many things, others, costs have gone up. We did reach out and obtain two quotes. Um, the first quote from JD Striping uh, came in at $34,199.11. Second quote came in from ANA Safety, $32,220.74. Um, ANA is the, the lower of the two. Uh, we've worked with them in the past, and we recommend uh, awarding that this evening. Thank you. Questions? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blueharty? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Ordinance number 9980-22. 
It's authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with Fabrizi uh, Trucking and Paving Company for emergency repairs to the storm sewer on Cork Hill Road and declaring an emergency. Motion for suspension by Smith, second by Saunders. Call the roll, please. Spinks? Yes. Canudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Motion for third and final by Flew Hardy, second by Spinks. Um, Mike? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we identified a significant um, repair that needs to be made um, in this area. This is an um, area near uh, Colony Club. Uh, it was a result of a failing 30 inch storm line. Um, due to the depth, it's exceeding 20 feet deep. We're unable to make those repairs uh, internally. Um, what we did is we went and we received three quotes uh, to make those repairs. Uh, Fabrizi did come in um, the lowest of the three. Uh, Nero uh, I'm sorry, Neroni and Sons came in at 38,800. Northeast Ohio Trenching Service came in at $41,464.50. Um, this emergency repair was also included in uh, Finance Director Gambosi's appropriations, uh, as we will be, um, and Jennifer Holland, I'm sorry, Jennifer Holland, she put that together, so I apologize for that. Um, Fabrizi being the lowest, um, obviously a repair that we have to make, um, and I will say, the councilman brought that up when I first was talking to him, so he was on the ball already, we were talking about this, and I said, we're, we're ready to go. Um, our recommendation is to move forward with Fabrizi so we can, uh, so they can start this repair. Thank you. Questions? Seeing none, call the roll. Spinks? Yes. Tanudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. And finally, a motion, I'll just read it. Go ahead, John. Motion. I have a motion to repeal ordinance number 9972-22 concerning uh, the TIF agreement, the tax incentive financing agreement, to enable the city to modify the ordinance in, in accordance with Ohio law uh, concerning Tinker's Creek Commerce Park. We just need to amend it to, uh, just to, to edit it. So we need to repeal the prior passage to amend it. To comply with Ohio law. Okay. Can I have a motion to that effect? Motion by Asbury, second by Saunders. Questions? Call the roll, please. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. And now we come part of that part of the meeting, the hearing of citizens. If you wish to speak, Please come forward, state your name, your address, and your comment. Right behind you. Denise Agali, 27 Tudor Avenue. My questions are in regards to Power a Clean Future Ohio. Are there requirements to become a Power a Clean Future Ohio? Yes, as with almost anything. Yeah. Okay, those requirements then are, according to ECFO, are three levels, systems. Has one been chosen? No. Has one been thought about being chosen? No. Okay, so the initial meeting then that is coming up in June is that them just coming in because according to their paperwork it says review the requirements below and reach out to schedule your initial meeting and receive your community survey and those are listing the requirements for the levels right that's what they're coming in to discuss the different levels yes we have not picked one okay if I, if I could just add, you don't have to pick e any of those. Those are if you're awarded a bronze community, silver community, or gold community. You don't have to do any of that. 
to be selected. And that's acknowledging you as a as a one of those tiers. But again, we're we're having them come in, and they they're going to present more information to City Council. Okay. And that's that's the way it was interpreted. The way it's interpreted here, the way I'm reading it as a resident, is that we would need to pick one. And then from that point, required to fulfill whatever the bronze level is, or the silver, or the gold. So that's the way it's interpreting, being interpreted. Again, that's why we inviting them in to explain this and why we put it on first reading and not just go to emergency and pass it. Okay. If you have questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies first. Thanks. Bob Niederich. 137 Sand Circle. Come back with more questions information about the juvenile delinquent. Uh, center that's been spoke of. And I've got some questions about what has and has not been done. First of all, has an economic, economic impact study been considered yet to determine the loss or gain of that? Since there's going to be no real estate taxes gained there, and the only income would be 1% of income of those groups on that, it would seem that there'd be a loss involved on that. The second thing would be the environmental impact, since that's going to be a residential facility on that. Have they moved forward toward determining if that land is actually usable as a residential, a residential facility? Another traffic impact study. Since we're talking about 330 people, if we looked at a, if we looked at three shifts. That means we'd be looking at 100 people and more moving in or out on that street on a regular time. I know part of that because I worked in independence in a building during rush hour in which I would see 100 cars lined up to get onto the street. I'm considering how much of an impact it's going to have, but that would be people coming out of that area. Another thought, too, has been, has there been any other views toward other uses for that land right there on that? Something that would actually be taxable for the real estate so we can dig gain something. From what I'm seeing here, the income gain off my estimate would be maybe 200000 a year. Am I close? About, is that the income? About how much? What? After... Okay. Your gain would be about three. Once they get fully impacted with 200, it's about three, 350 employees. Two, okay. three, three, less than 297 was their full employment, which would equate to uh, where I had it at close to $400,000. The that loss is 20000 on the value right now. The property, property is only like a million. But the income is that we're speaking of. That's after the reciprocation? There's no reciprocation. Uh, well, they're coming from Maple Heights. They're and working others, the facility. Okay. They're, they're working in Bedford, they're not at their home. There would be no this is actual full three percent taken out of their way. Yes. Okay. Except they they came percent. to us, we did not I understand see them from another community. Yes, well yeah. I, and I and actually that's one of the questions I have on that when they talk about their fifty points about this increase. model that forty nine to fifty. The question there is what are those requirements on that? Considering what it's for, it's not like you know we're not looking for a, you know you know a national uh, you know the, or a convention or something. So no, what is it they find in us that's so attractive that they would come here versus other those areas? Those that fifty would, requirements were what they required to find, but they used to search for a spot. Mm -hmm. Our location met forty nine of them. What did it not? Meet? It did not. They would have liked to have a little bit more acreage. Okay, it's the only area. They have enough for what they want to do. They would have liked to have more. All right. And what have they said about expansion? I think it's going to be what it is. There's only a certain footprint, and um, that's where we're going to hold them to what they're at now. We right. only have so many people. Um, as far as traffic, there will be less people coming and going than when it was a banking building. that had over 400 employees. How long ago was that? That uh, left. We'll see at the same time, these people will be leaving three times a day, so there's not going to be an impact on traffic. Okay, is with that if they chose to, and if the state decided to buy the rest of the land all the way up to Lee Road, um, there was, would there be anything to prevent them from expanding that to a 500 like unit? 
There, yes, we are. We have control over that. Yeah. If this there's an uh, is an ordinance a variance that's going to have to take place. Yes, so they're, having a, they're having a uh, planning commission meeting tomorrow night. All right, and what is that ordinance for? What specifically? To look for conditional use or uh, special use permit. Special yeah. use for and so what is and for why are they requiring it? I mean, why do they so are they required for that special it's use? It's a change from just a office building. They will have educational facilities in there, which aren't addressed in the business one. There's a couple of items such as that that they will be uh, asking for the uh, special. Yeah, there's some there's some, there's some items listed in the zoning of that space now that fits what they do. Okay. They have administration. That zoning allows for administration. They have. Um, plans for a technical school and education. That zoning allows for that. That zoning does not talk about, it does not deny, it's silent on the residential component, which is what they're asking for a special permit to include that, or special request to include that. Okay. Um, just to add into like what the mayor says, yes, there were more people when there was the U.S. Bank actually to attract U.S. Bank. The city actually offered to facilitate a shuttle service using our vans to and from that space to limit the amount of traffic. U.S. Bank did not want to do that. Um, ultimately, it ended up being a moot point. Um, as far as the roadway, um, that is a highly industrial area back there. It's not an asphalt road. It's a concrete road. There's going to be minimal impact to that. They're not bringing in heavy equipment. Uh, a lot of it's regular vehicles. Uh, so there's no there's no impact um, in regards to that. The financial impact, I think, um, uh, uh, finance director mentioned it. Um, right now, it's I think we get based on the value. The property is valued at roughly a million or a million somewhere around there. That's what the value is. We get about twenty thousand dollars right. based is on the income tax. Oh, let me finish. You. Right, I'm just answering your questions based on the. Um, the income tax, the city would generate about $400,000 um, in 2026 when they were fully operational, when they would, theoretically, if they would, become fully operational. So that's about the equivalent to our road program where we do all of, all of our streets. That's about what we have. As far as the other uses, um, I met at length, as our economic development uh, staff member did, um, at length since last fall. Um, the reality is we've had very limited interest in the site for office. We're coming out of COVID. Office space, to be frank, is dead. Anybody that tells you office is booming, they're not. You could look at what's on the real estate market now. I highly recommend checking, especially downtown Cleveland, some of the neighboring communities. Um, one example is you look at the city of Lakewood when their hospital closed. They took that and they had a massive plan for office. They have had to shift because they can't fill that with office. Taking into account the other component is, honestly, it's just, it's even if we did identify someone for the space, it's not the easiest to get to. That has been a turnoff with some of the parties that have done a walkthrough. We had one other business that was interested um, the reasoning that they chose not to move forward, this was earlier this year, was because of that location um, and the access, not, it's just, it's not visible. Um, and it's hard for employees to come and go from there. Um, they had 70 employees. Uh, as far as um, uh, an in, in environmental uh, study, we've not conducted any environmental that would solely be up to any, any buyer. Um, and then I, I think I answered all your questions. Yeah, I think so. I might add, um, Mike was saying, the number of people that were there at the U.S. Bank building was 240. Mm -hmm. Money came in at 420,000 per year. It was very similar to that, even less employees than that. So the effect on that of getting in and out should be even better than what U.S. Bank had there. But it would be the equivalent of what we had with uh, U.S. Bank. Yeah, so okay, so if another company had Another company like or comparable to that to come out and get the same. But actually, my confusion there, and forgive me if I'm wrong, but I was under the impression that there would be no real estate tax collected. There, the real estate will not be collected, but income tax will be collected. 
income and not real estate. So real estate will be the loss, but the, the value at one time that property was worth seven and a half million when they first built it. And it had dropped substantially in value over time. And I went into the building the other day and it has not been maintained to the level it used to be. I mean, I saw weeks in the roofs already and I was concerned about what was up there. I, they have plans of what they will use and what they won't use on the property. Prior users of that property, I don't believe I saw anything that had Chemicals or anything like that that would... Uh, That's actually the big problem. question is... There were no... It was, it's, it's always been primarily office space. Um, obviously, it was executive offices um, when Tops was back there. Um, Alltel was located there. Um, it sat vacant for a while after that. Um, U.S. Bank um, relocated there during the housing crisis in 18. They signed a 10-year lease. Um, obviously, the market from... from um, mortgages and that, that crisis was drastically improved in 18 and they, they didn't need to uh, continue that lease. Actually, they disbanded all those employees to other offices, um, not only in, in Northeast Ohio, but out, out of Ohio. Um, and then it obviously sat vacant. Um, one property owner, um, lady lives in Michigan, and to Frank's point, it, it was not upkept. Um, and that kind of led to some of the dispute between the other party that was kind of interested um, there was no money going into into the building, and there were there was a little bit of a dispute over um, necessary repairs. There was one other um, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, one other item just to um, that I didn't answer. You asked for those bullet points, so there are 50 items. I'm, I'm not. We didn't get that. We didn't request that. Um, what I what they did explain some of those bullet points is they wanted to be in Cuyahoga County. They wanted to have a minimal impact on their 300 employees. Um, that was one of theirs. They wanted a secluded space. They wanted a space with natural, like a natural buffer. Those were some of the examples. I don't know the other 47. I, I did not request that. What was the purpose for the natural buffer? What, what, for, what reason? I think just for seclusion. Okay. Just for seclusion. Not, um, intended for security because... No, no, right. no. Because, I mean, where, where they're located at right now, um, there, there's none of that. I mean, you can see, you know, that uh, directionally I could be off here, so I'm not I'm looking at a uh, monitor in my head, but if you go and you look at the overhead on the county website, um, on the possibly so south end of their property, um, there's a residential street there that directly abuts their properties. So, and I don't think there's any trees. There's not a whole lot of trees throughout there. At their current location. At their current, I'm sorry, at their current location. I, I, when I look at it, it, to me, it does not look like an isolated location, which to me would be a preferred place for a, a penitentiary or a juvenile center of that sort, if it was a training thing, that it would have some space in between and some certain amount of isolation, which is not the case there on, the, on that. And at their current one. Hmm? At their current one. Well, I don't know, and not the current one, although I worked at the one next door, so when they speak of that, if you were to be there, it looks somewhat isolated because next to it is Warrensville Developmental Center, which is a controlled uh, facility. On that next to uh, it is a school, which is closed during the day. On that across the street from that was the uh, workhouse. So it's not a situation where, you know, someone, someone you know, was looping around the corner from there. And I don't know. I, I, when I work there, I don't... I don't really remember, except for a couple of houses past Green Road School. Those are the only houses I remember there when I worked there, and I don't think there's any change on that. Uh, there, there is a street on the, uh, and again, I don't know if it's south or east, I'm not sure, but if you go on the county website, there is a residential street mm -hmm. on the one side of the property. I did go on there and check, um, just to check values. You know, I wanted to see what those values are, if, if there was maybe an impact uh, of those homes that literally right out their backyard was this property um, and it ranged there were some properties I think was you know and again I, I didn't click on all of them because there's a lot of houses you know I was just there were some were valued in the 90s and this is based off Cuyahoga County records uh, there was one valued at 168 there was one in the 130s so it's it wasn't like they're forty thousand dollars twenty thousand sixty thousand there you know, when I look at that place, I look at Green Road, and Green Road's a relatively isolated area. It's not like Rockside Road on that. I don't remember there were any gutters on that street when I worked 
Georgia, and I don't think they've changed. My concern really here is the, the security of my neighborhoods, particularly because I came here in 2000, no, 1967. I was four years old. When I grew up here, the first 25 of my life was spent here. And at that age, all I saw was kids in that neighborhood. On that, nothing but kids in my neighborhood. Things gone by, guess what? All I see is kids in my neighborhood now. I'm concerned about the youth in our area and where they are and their location. You know, I, I have a concern for that. I'm not really worried about the value of my house. I don't think the value of my house is going to go down on that. I don't think that, you know, uh, the warehouses next door are going to get them leave because that place is there. My concern may be that uh, very soon the warehouses are now made, the owners may decide that if the state were to offer it, they may buy, the state might buy that land and then it will offer them to extend it. And since you're giving that use available, inevitably by variance, it would probably roll over. It would be but, but that, that, that doesn't affect, that's all in Maple Heights. We have no control over that. Uh, we're ta I'm talking about, well, it affects Maple Heights. It affects everybody. And we've we talked situation. Maple the fact that there's a city line there doesn't really matter. I mean, but they, they could, if they wanted to, if that was available and it's not, all that property, they could just go across the street and build there. We get nothing out of it. Well, what right. do we get out of it now? Uh, $400,000. $400,000. And, that, and that, that wasn't what based our, our decision on. And we haven't made a decision. Yeah, well, what? We, we have not made a decision. Answer, if it wasn't that, what, what you're considering this for, what are you basing it on? Where, where do you think the goal is? What, what do we gain from putting that... Uh, Area there, aside from what, the four hundred or five hundred thousand dollars in, uh, in income taxes, not that it's nothing, but that was. It helps somewhat. the surrounding businesses as well. You know? How does it help the surrounding businesses? People are going to go spend money that work there. I mean, I, I think I want, I, and I don't want to speak for the law director, but you look at that income tax, those income tax figures that we received from them. <coughs> They're not, these aren't $35,000 a year jobs. They're highly educated, highly paid state employees. And so there's three rollover. There, 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 there's, there, there's three, and, and again, I'm not, I'm not going to debate this. I'm just answering a question yeah. that you asked. Okay. So no matter what I say might not be the right answer, okay. I'm yeah. giving you an answer. You have 300 people that, you know what? They may need to get their car serviced. Or if, so and so is talking to her husband and may need a new car, or they're going to go to dinner in town, or they. So instead of you know, I'm not saying these are the exact reasons, but we're giving you some. Is there stability to the property? Sure. We've seen cycles of when Alltel Alltel signs a lease. When Alltel leaves, it's at vacant for seven years. Seven years, we didn't receive anything, but the twenty thousand. Well, actually, by then it was it was a little bit more um, in property taxes. We didn't receive anything for seven years. U.S. Bank came in, and things were good. That was only a 10-year lease. Then they're gone, and that was in 2018. So we're on f almost five years. Now we received 20,000 a year based on a property tax. So yes, there's an end user of significant payroll. So from a stability standpoint, they've been in the same location for 50 years. I'm not saying anybody here or the administration is giving a decision hasn't been made, but I'm, I'm merely giving you some of the pieces that play into a decision. There's stability. There's 300 in employees that, you know what, they may go through town. They may spend some dollars. They may go somewhere on lunch. They may go through downtown. You know, it, they're not the 93 people that are housed there. Those are some of the examples that play into this decision. Right. Had, had part of what's got to me in this is that I only found out about the taxes. <laughs> is at any point, um, Next time a Bedford newsletter goes out on that, to tell me how much I have to pay on my my taxes this month or my my water bill on that. Will there be anything going out explaining to people that this is going to happen, this is planned, and this is when the decision is going to be made? Because I didn't see that, and I that that's that's part of what gets me is because I, I get that bill every month. It comes in an envelope. There's no reason why a piece of paper couldn't be saying there. This is what may be happening on that. And, and if I could, the, um, online, you 
still have the whole video of the whole presentation? I don't know if you had a chance to yes, see it, did. but they explained what, from their standpoint of view, why they wanted to improve facilities that are outdated at the other place. Oh. A little expansion, not right. We'd like to. I think we should cap it um, and make them hold to that. I, and then their facility will be structured. Now, do they need to keep a lid on it? Absolutely. I mean, that's what your, your security issue is and all that. They have to do that like they've been doing. Their track record is good. They've checked it. Um, so that has to be um, continued at that facility. Uh, but what they're trying to do is improve lives of those people, too, that uh, could be improved. Yeah, and, and I certainly understand that if it was a situation change on that, I would suggest that they upgrade because I, I know the building. I know the Indian Hills building. It's all ancient on that. I just wanted to add one thing. Some of your, trust me when I say this, some of your points um, are the exact points that we've thought of from day one. Um, I have the utmost confidence and respect for our police chief um, as well as our leadership team. And right off the bat, we were going to do our homework. He has had extensive conversations with um, each of the police chiefs within those communities. Um, he's had extensive conversations with the police chiefs of neighboring communities um, as far as response. Have you ever had to respond to this? Have you, staff have to gone there? Um, all of, the, all of the, those chiefs, and, and I, I believe and I firmly uh, respect the chiefs of police throughout, you know, everywhere. Um, that opinion matters to, to me. And, you know, it's been consistent that they've all responded. We have we've not responded. We have zero concerns. Um, and one of the consistent messages has been, honestly, we don't even, know, for the most part, know they're there. They operate within their facility. Um, you know, that's where, you know, it's one thing for, you know, Mike to think it's a good idea or not, whatever. I'm not giving, you know, my position as of right now, but, you know, if it's a good idea or bad. But when it comes down to it, if safety is a concern, you know, hearing it from the chief. Um, I, I've known him for a very long time, and I know some of the things he said at that meeting. Um, he doesn't say that just to say it, to appease tough questions. That's not what we do. We face those questions and give an honest opinion, and that's what we've done. You know, we've continuously, we, we are still um, requesting some information as far as public records. As I mentioned to City Council uh, um, the other week, we received their most recent audit. Um, those, any types of those facilities. When we ran our jail, we had to do a similar. Um, we received their audit, and we looked through it, and we read it, and it was substantial. It was a vigorous inspection. Um, detailed, um, a lot of boxes needing to be checked. Um, and I could say, based on that, and that was from, I think it was from two years ago, because they have to do it every third year, um, they, they were met 100% of the criteria based on that audit on the state level, and they were accredited. So um, it is not a Cuyahoga County owned or run facility. It's two separate um, facilities, and you know we're trying to get as much information as possible to inform to make sure there's an informed decision. I, mean, I don't understand. Well, when you speak of audit, you're not talking about just a, just a financial not audit financial or? operational audit. That might have been the wrong term if you're thinking yeah, of financial. Um, okay, I wasn't sure. It, it, okay. it, it, inspection audit, something okay. those lines. Is there any chance that a phase one or phase two is going to be done on that land? They, they will do everything necessary. I, is I it thought they might be conditioned. I don't know if they uh, yeah, did some preliminary stuff. We're not involved in any of their due diligence that they would do. That would be on them. Are they required to do that before? That would give that, that information available to you before. No, that, that, that's up to them. I don't. We are not involved in their purchase agreement. I have no idea what conditions or restrictions. Or I, I don't know that. Well, yes, that, that that stands out to me too on their end. As far as a living facility of what's well, been there, and I understand that they're going to be a lot more strict than we are. Hmm? Yeah, that's, they're going to be more strict than we are. That's well, right. I'm not talking about that. I was, what, what was there before? Here's an example. On the, on the west side of Cleveland, a community development corporation was building houses. They built. Uh, they were putting in four houses on that. They put in the first 
free on that. They did a phase one. They went through and they looked at the sandbar maps and said there's nothing wrong, right? They dug the hole for the fourth one and found out that there was chromium in there because the guy up the street was doing chrome jobs, was going down the sewer and ended into the base of that area. That, nor that, uh, that organization went belly up on that. What, that's the same kind of thought I had there. That's been a long time there. We don't know what's there. And now they're going to move it. If you want to move someone there, it would seem I would feel we'd be obliged to know if that area is safe on that. Just like well, if we put a house in that. They're not going to get in that area if they don't know what's what? safe. Yes, yes. Well, what, what I bring up here is something, sure. something that we should be uh, looking first, which, she, which we require them to do that before we pass the law. No, it will all come up in the process. When this is not just a, okay, boom, we approve it. Okay. It's not that simple. Not and that's why we had the public meeting, so everybody could hear about it. We put it online. We did not hide anything from anybody. The state came up here with the, the number one person in the, the juvenile program. And to the guy that does the buildings, they gave us all the information. Didn't hold back. They answered every question. And... What more do we want? What? And they got to go through t tomorrow. They got to go through the planning commission. Then, if there's other criteria, they got to meet those. Then it ultimately comes up to council to have the final word. And if we're not comfortable with it, we can say no. Right. And yes. if we are comfortable, we can say yes. It all depends on what plays out, and it's a long, drawn out process. One item I just want to clarify we don't have any legal standing to order someone to do a phase one or phase two with a private transaction. We, we don't own the property and we're not buying it, so we, we don't have, legally we can't make them do that. And the buyer doesn't have to make them do it. Being that it's the state of Ohio, I would imagine that they're going to do it. But as far as us ordering that, we don't have any legal ground to do that. Right. Planning Commission tomorrow? When does that start with the way? I don't even know the time of the uh, I, I believe it's 6 o'clock. My other question there, when we speak about phases, so what's the step after the planning commission, and then what's the step after that? What's we don't know yet until I mean, they decide whatever. If, if the planning commission okay it, all right. If they do, then we don't know because they could put some stipulation that we don't know. No, I want to know is, it'll be out there. We're going to tell everybody. It, if they didn't put stipulations, if it went through the planning commission. If it passed, they said, oh, great, they did it, and we got it, we said, great, that would be it. Okay. It's not that simple. simple. So, I mean, that's, it's planning commission and We're not going to do that. We're going to look what's in the best interest no, of the I'm city. Asking, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I feel like I've been in the dark about a lot of this because I don't know what's happening. I hear it's going to happen. There's other wide steps. I'm wondering... What are those steps? So, it, planning tomorrow. Okay. If everything's passed, it goes to city council on the next agenda. City council is many things can change. They could table it. They could ask for more questions. They could deny it. They could pass it. If it passes, there's probably about a year to eighteen months of, of planning. Then there is an estimated two to three years of construction. Mm -hmm. The facility won't open until, if everything went according to plan and every box was checked, 2026. Okay. If you want a timeline. But again, that's... I'm actually just I'm interested if after this planning commission tomorrow, what can happen next? And from what you're describing, if nothing changed. If, but if the planning commission gives the okay... We don't know. So we can't I, answer that question. No, I'm asking you for a sequel. I'm, I'm, I'm not asking. I'm asking. I'm not asking what their answer is. What I'm trying to figure out is what the flow is. We and don't know until they make right. a decision. Okay, so and then, they could put requirements. Right. That would be the next thing. I don't know what to tell you more. Ask you questions tomorrow. Then get okay. Yeah, I'll try to be good tomorrow. Yes. Yes. Good. Yeah. Sure. Thanks. So good. We're trying to do all we can up here to tell you. Anyone else? Yeah, I'm at the side. <laughs> this is a high I appreciate you. I appreciate you, though. I do appreciate you. I appreciate the uh, uh, patience that the, the city council has uh, just recently demonstrated.
My name is Jay Watts. I live on Berwyn Drive. Number? A 40. I'm going to address a couple of things that have already been addressed. Number one, grass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> grass. Uh, I like to have some idea, you know, hopefully it won't call me any irritation. What is the process that the, the city goes by in identifying <coughs> the need, that they need to address this property? So, so as far are we talking specifically like with grass? For right now, um, right now that's that's my focus. Yeah, so you know? right, right now we have um, our two inspectors. They're going around. They're identifying properties. Um, if a property is not been on our previous list, for instance, those vacant bank owned homes that we sent a letter out, those properties get a notice a notice posted to the home, and then there's the follow up by. Legally, we have to give 72 hours for that property to have the lawn addressed. After that, we're able to then have the lawn cut and then it's assessed. Um, so obviously we take a photo of before and after and it, of all of that and it gets added to where if individuals do dispute, we have that photo. Usually there's a, there's a measuring stick in there to show that. Um, those that have already received those letters that went out in, in March, roughly March, um, they were already given notice, and if they didn't do it, we can order that to be cut uh, immediately. So that's in regards to that. Um, you know, typically when our inspectors are out, if they see something just in general, they make a note, they come back here, they'll work with the clerks to write something up, and we will send it out to the uh, property owner. Either, and, and if it's a rental, it goes to both the property and uh, the owner. If there's repairs that have to be made or if the gutter's hanging off or what, whatever that may be. Um, we are down. Um, you know, I talk about part-time. We've had an open inspector position for, I think it's 15 months that we've been trying to fill. Um, it's actually been a growing concern that's been discussed in uh, the First Suburbs um, organization. And they keep explaining the what they refer to as like an employment from, for that specific criteria, um, certified building officials, that it is, the pool is getting, it is shrinking. And there's been some discussions about sharing staff with other communities. We did engage in that. Um, actually, it was last year we had a conversation with a neighboring uh, community. They chose not to go down that route. But we're trying to look at options to get you know, in a perfect world, we could send our staff up and down and check and write up. Right now, we're short staffed. So, you know, when we see things, um, if there's a concern that comes in, we send our staff out to address that. Um, basically, the process is we have to send notice, give an X number of timeline uh, to address it. Uh, if it is, and it automatically gets put in our system for a follow-up. If that's, I'm giving an example, like if it's 30 days. Um, we go out in 30 days. If it is not addressed, uh, they get sent typically a final notice. Um, that final notice will have a shortened period. Automatically in the system, we're out again. If it's still not addressed, then they're officially cited. And then it goes to the Bedford Municipal Court. And at that stage, we don't have our, our we're not involved anymore. It's the judge addresses it, but that individual is cited. Um, the prosecutor does assist and work through that and hopefully get some resolution. But sometimes we run into it, seems like nothing has happened, and we've had very good conversations uh, with the court that by the time some of these get to the court, it could be nine, it could be three months, four months. And then, if, uh, and, uh, to be honest with you, at times, if there is an extension given, um, so those are things that we don't control. Um, but that's typically the process and the legal process as far as giving notice. We can't just go and immediately issue citations. Oh. If, that, if that helps, I'm sorry. But that, that does help, but um, um, it's not encouraging here that we don't have the staff and to go out to do those inspections. That's very concerning and circle that could be resolved very soon. Uh, what I also have noticed is that we have these lawn services that come in the community and have these big, nice, Riding lawnmowers when they when they start them up, they sound like they're starting up a big jet engine. These guys throw all the grass out in the street, and when's something going to be done about it? I mean, they just go and they just throw it out in the street, 
and they're going about their way, and clogs up the gutters, and you know, this looks messy. Uh, that's part of my concern as well. And there, right. there is an ordinance on that, and if the police see them, they can well, take yes. action. Yes, yeah. it is. That's, that's something else. And I talked to Mr. Malice about this. I don't see police in my neighborhood. Years ago, I used to see police in my neighborhood. I do not see police in my neighborhood. I have a, 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 a neighbor who lives on um, Berkshire and Berwyn and moved in from out of state. They have a relative that is in the business of transporting cars and has this big long transport of maybe have stacks of maybe 18 cars. They had three times parked that transporter on Berkshire in the yard, covered up the sidewalk, right in front of the stop sign, and I've seen it there three days, and the police did not tag it. Did not tag it. Other times I've seen it there, I come to the police department and let them know it's there. So they don't come to my neighborhood because this is too obvious. This is too obvious. And in years past, I might see them kind of cruising because I'm not too far from the, from the high school. And that might be part of it. But I don't see the police cruising my neighborhood. And I'm not there all day, 24 hours. I used to see them because I like to be outside, particularly during the summertime. But like I said, this transporter, you can go by the property, you can see the ruts are still there in the property. Plus tall grass. So visibility and response time, because I will personally come down, pick up the phone over there, and let them know. This is what I see right now. And I'm saying, where were you guys during the night? I thought you cruised the neighborhoods. This is too big to miss. And it's blocking a sidewalk, and it's blocking a stop sign. So I'm hoping things get better. <laughs> but like I said, you got these lawn services come through our neighborhood, and they just throw the crap all out in the street, and they go about their business. They need to take their blower and blow it out in the street, off, off the lawn. And so for police to be available to catch these guys, I would like to see that. Hopefully it will get better. Um, my next thing is, I want to back up. The winter, I, would, I appreciate how the snow removal service did a fine job, at least in my opinion. I thought they addressed the main roads very timely. And I appreciate it, because when I would go through other neighborhoods, I would notice at least the main roads in Bedford were addressed very timely. So. I, I appreciate that. Uh, my next concern is um, there's property where not only the grass is of concern, but hedges and things like that on property are just disgusting. Now, you mentioned how commercially there's a struggle for office space where that's just not the, 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 the name of the game. I am seeing some data, and I'm not saying the official data, but I'm seeing some data whereas the property in Bedford is becoming more and more rental. And with that being said, you know, we're seeing nationwide where in, uh, corporations for investment purposes are gobbling up these rentals, and they're satisfied just to get the rent, but they're not really managing them. But then I even seen where a couple of houses in my they're being managed by independent people who do not live in the neighborhood. But a landlord someplace else, and it's just a sad state of affair, you know, because there's just more and more people than mine. What I'm seeing, there are being renters, and they're coming in not with the accountability of what I saw a year ago of people who are actually homeowners. Now, how can we get this done? I don't know. Maybe council people can maybe walk in the neighborhood and introduce themselves. To, I'm your council person and kind of bring them up to speed is what might be expected of them as a person who lives in this house, but is also a renter. Because I, like I said, I talked to some of these landlords, they said, well, now I reduce the rent and give them a lot more so they'll cut the yard. They still don't cut the yard. I mean, it's a sad state of affairs, you know, I mean, they still don't cut the yard. I mean, they don't even want to deal with the snow removal. I mean, there's some things there I'd like to see being addressed. <coughs> I also noticed um, between Berwyn and Northfield Road, they have recently put up a sign flashing your speed. What initiated that? What was the initiation to do get that done? So what, what we have, 
Uh, we have a number of those. Some are more permanent that we leave up. For instance, there's one on Broadway that's permanent. And then there's others that we're moving around um, throughout the city, and that collects data. Um, and that will help identify it. So even when it's on and it flashes, you may see it blank. Um, a lot of people think it's not working. It actually is. Because sometimes, you know, if you're driving, if I'm driving and I see 42, I'm like, oh my God, I should slow down. Um, when it's blank, people think it's not working and it actually is working. So it helps us collect data and look for areas that, you know what, there, there's, there's a speeding thing and then we, we will make sure there's a special attention or we can focus on certain areas. Whereas there's been other times where, you know, we would put something on the street and we would have some of those on there for a month and um, residents as they're going 70 down this street every day and over a month the highest speed is 39. Well, it shows, well, it's really not that high. This is some of the data. So a lot of that is for, you know, our traffic enforcement and our traffic um, patrols and things like that. Thank you. But I would come back to what the clergy and Spencer are saying about what they're seeing in their community about some issues of what they know is happening. And I'm seeing it in the Bedford, where, I mean, where I'm at. They're speeding down the, the, the school where the lights are flashing. You come to Northfield and Columbus, I tell you what, you, you stop. There's cars maybe 10 or 20 feet behind your lights already red, and they're still going to go through. And I'm seeing that happening more and more, where cars are just saying, I'm making the rules up as I go. You know, I don't know how, be how better I can summarize this. I, I can, so, and you're right. Yes. And, and we've, 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 we've caught some uh, individuals that have done that. Um, and that, that is an issue that, you know, we've, we've discussed this at a mayor's and manager's meeting. Um, that is not just a Bedford problem. Oh, of course not. Um, there is, I, I, I will say, you know, through the pandemic, there were a lot of, um, and there, there are a lot of communities, they don't chase. They don't. And there's a concern about that. And, I, and I'll give you some examples that we've seen it firsthand. And what I mean by that is there's some communities that have policies, they just, they just don't. If you pull someone over and an officer gets out, they're gone, they don't call it, they don't pursue. Um, I can't tell you the amount of individuals, um, I know three for sure, yes. um, two of them were on Rockside Road, we pulled them over for speeding, our officer got out, they waited for our officer to get out, and they took off into Maple Heights, and we pursued them, and we stopped them. Two of the occasions, the gentleman said, I can't believe you chased me. Because the other cities, they're not chasing. That's right. That has a ripple effect. When communities don't do that, there's a ripple effect. And, and I wish we could be the one to, to correct us. We're trying. We, we, are, we are trying. And it's, it's, it, it, it's traffic safety is definitely a concern. And, you know, we're, we're, um, I, we added some of those uh, data collection pieces. I can tell you where uh, the chief and assistant chief and myself have had discussions of further um, ideas, yeah. and we hope to make some announcements over the next couple months of things that we're going to look to do instead of just doing status quo. I really, I, I wish I could tell you we're going to solve it and it'll be corrected next month. Um, that obviously is impossible, um, but we're going to look to do some things, maybe uh, outside the box, maybe purchase other traffic enforcement tools. Um, we're looking to do that now. We discussed it during our, our internal review of the department um, two months ago. Actually, you know, I, I appreciate the, you taking the time to explain to me. I think most of us have witnessed that the privilege to drive is not being uh, accepted with accountability with a lot of drivers today. Um, <laughs> I, I did one example, not to keep talking, but. Uh, our insurance that, that we work with, um, this is a, one of the first years we've seen a direct result. Of, we're required as our whole package to have uninsured motorist coverage. Um, we've had a lot of claims come in uh, uninsured, and we have to cover those costs. If it's an electrical box that was hit on Rockside Road that was twenty some thousand dollars, um, other damages um, that are that are done. If someone's not insured, we have to make those repairs, and it goes through our uh, through our coverage. Uh, this year, with, during the renewal process, and we're again similar with a consortium, 
Um, and as a board member, listening to it, um, it was the first year that that line item has gone up for all municipalities because the amount of individuals, they don't have insurance. And someone's paying for those repairs. And it's the first time, I think ours went up about 12000 For some reason, that brings... It's it was about 12000 for the uninsured motorist piece. But that's the same thing of, of not, it's, it's the wall, you got to have insurance. But unfortunately. Well, you know, just as that, you was using an example of the ones that they stop individuals in Maple High and told the police, I'm surprised you, you, you pursue me. It's that mindset that when someone runs a red light, they don't think that no one's going to pursue them. Some action needs to be done. I don't have a solution for it. I'm a concerned citizen for all of this. Kids out in the street, because a lot of kids want to walk in the street, which even makes it more concerning for me. But I'm hoping that the city of Beverly will find some tools that will at least, in my view, when someone comes into Beverly, they're going to say, no, you better watch out, Beverly. They, they'll nail you. That would be what I would want people to start saying versus someone stopping saying, I'm surprised you stopped me. Because no one else does it in the community. I want them to be able to say, better. you will get stopped. Now, we're not too assume because of the risk. I can understand it. But I do want to hear that you're stopping them. And what happens beyond stopping them because they say, well, you don't want to have these, these, these chases. I, I get it. Yeah. Because that could be more dangerous. And obviously, we do so very, you know, yes. have we called some off? Absolutely. Yes. But, you know, I go up further up, up Northfield, there's cops out there in Northfield going up there, uh, you know, uh, you know, before you get, you know, you cross that summit line or even in Walton Hills go up Al Alexander Road, they're going to be out there. They're going to be out there. Uh, at least there's some visibility that they're saying. There used to be a police at the, at the, at the service station of Solon Road and Northfield. It was sometimes trying to people come, come, come across a bridge with that. I have yet to see a police officer where they're trying to see if they're going to catch someone. It's been a long time. But I think visibility is at least a beginning to start at least people know you come to the area, we're going to be at least looking at you. We're not going to pursue you. That's another issue because that's a judgment process. That's a gray area. But I certainly want to see more visibility. And thank you very much. Oh no, something else. Cars. There is just too many cars parked in people's yards versus being in, in a driveway. They're all over the damn place. Excuse me. I mean, they're just all over the place. I mean, and this has been going on for a long time, but it's increasing. I think it's because of the pandemic, some, some house issue. More and more people living in one house, they cannot accommodate all these cars. I'm sorry, but the law says you cannot be parking, on, parking all over the grass anywhere you want to go. That's the law. And it's just happening over and over. And particularly with junk cars, just, just anywhere. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> Seeing none, we have a motion for adjournment. By Saunders, second by Asbury. Call them the roll, please. Spinks? Yes. Nudis? Yes. Blue Party? Yes. Smith? Yes. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. And thank you all for coming. It's been a really, really good night.